Yo, what is going on everybody? It's your boy GSQ Zeus, of course, and today I'm bringing you a Nasher tutorial, guys. If you haven't seen, I did a Nasher movement or just movement in general tutorial on my channel. So today's video is more going to be about just general Nasher players because I know a lot of people are new to the game. So we're going to talk about hard aiming, pop shotting, and blind firing. Basically, just what to do in each situation because I've noticed a lot of people lately have been asking me what's the best thing to do in each situation. But basically, here's how it works is basically sometimes you want to hard aim, sometimes you want to blind fire, and sometimes you're going to hit the pop shot. Each one is used for a different situation, and of course, you're going to want to use um, the shot depending on where you are. So, in certain situations, if you have a corner advantage, you're going to want to hit the hard aims to be able to control the situation better, or um, you know what I mean, to just have a better angle on the person. And then there's going to be certain situations where you're on the move and you want to just put a shot in somebody and move. But in my opinion, the most consistent and most usable shot, like in terms of damage and moving, is the pop shot. As you can see right there, I just threw a little bit of a back A into it. If you don't know what that is, you can go ahead and watch my tutorial video on my channel because it does show you how to do that. And I have all types of movement based things on that channel or on or in that video. So go ahead and check it out. Alright guys, so like I said, if you want to learn how to do movement base, up A, back A, all those type of things, reaction shots, if you don't know what that is, which is right there, you can go ahead and check out that movement video. This is going to be a beginner's tutorial. This probably will be a three-part series. I'll do beginner, intermediate, as well as... um. Uh, Expert, I don't, I don't like to say that because you're never an expert, but I'll do that for, you know, the more veteran wall bouncers or game players in general. So now back to the original point. So now we're going to talk about hard aiming, um, pop shotting, and blind firing. So like I said, there's certain situations that you want to get into where you're going to do each one. So now if you're in a gunfight from range, like let's say your opponent's about that far, of course you're going to try to put some shots onto him because if you pop shot, it's not going to be as more, as accurate as a hard aim to the chest. But pop shotting, the difference between pop shot blinding and hard aiming, hard aiming is when you have the opportunity, the time to put a shot into somebody. When you see him coming, you have the time to do it, pull back, you know, whatever. But here's the thing why blind firing and pop shotting is so important. I don't blind fire as much as I do pop shot just because I feel like the blind fire is a little bit inconsistent in this game. And as you can tell, once you get your pop shots on, they're pretty accurate. So the main point of pop shotting and blind fire is to have speed with your player. To be able to go like this, to move around, and then add all of it together and, you know, just actually hit your shots while moving. That was a little bit of a hard aim, but it's not a straight hard aim. So I do, you know... So uh, I do suggest, you know, just getting used to movement and putting shots on people, practice your accuracy. If you guys are wondering why he died, he actually died right there because he was on his third down, and that's how you die. So it's it's just very important to understand the Nasher that, like, it, you, con you consistently want to move, guys, and you just consistently want to put shots. And hard aiming, it helps you, but only in a situation where you can hard aim absolutely and get away with it. Alright guys, now like I said, uh, hard aiming, you know, pop shotting, and blind firing, there's times that are necessary for all. As you can see, if somebody's going to sit there, you're not going to want to just sit there and blind fire at them because you have a way less chance of actually consistently hitting them. Now hard aim is a little bit different also. This is where accuracy comes into place. You guys always ask me, ask me how I'm so accurate or how do I place my shots. I think a commonly mis something that's commonly mistaken for accuracy is people, instead of you know like trying to hit their target, they try to follow it consistently. You know what I mean? They're just keeping their thing on it the way i play is i try to see where my opponent's going to be before it obviously this situation we know he's only going left or right but since i see that and i see his body movement i should know to be ahead of the shot you know what i mean see right there he juked me out actually but that's the point exactly is you got to know where he's going i always place my shots where they're going to be in the future so now that goes that goes to show the hard aim and why the hard aim is so much more accurate with distance if you pop shot you obviously have to be at a little bit of a different place and know your shots i'm there because i've practiced enough but pop shotting is going to be a lot harder harder when somebody's moving and you're in a situation like that but I still do recommend pop shotting I highly recommend not blind firing from this distance which I'm sure you already know that but some of you might not know so it's either you know you either could hit a hop shot or um, a hard aim and then throw a pop shot in there but as you can see the damage difference is different Hard, hard aims from far will cause more damage, but that's why I say pop shots are important because it's all about how you move, you know what I mean? You could hard aim as much as you want, but look, what happens when this guy starts doing, see how he's doing different movements? You know, now I got to readjust and figure it out. You know, I put my shots in, you know, I, I'm hitting shots because I know what type of pattern he's going in. So accuracy is very, very important, and I highly suggest trying to see the player before he actually goes somewhere, like knowing where they're going to be. 
All right, guys, so now as you can see from that one, it's very important to practice your accuracy and knowing where the player is going to be before they actually go. So next here, we're going to go ahead and talk about hot spots. I'm going to get back to accuracy and precision and movement with the Nasher, but we're going to talk about hot spots. As you can see, I got GSQ reactives right here, and he's going to be in a corner position. I'm going to have him try to kill me, and we're going to show you how to get out of a situation when one of you has right hand advantage and he has left if you didn't know this is the side that will have left hand advantage which is not necessarily good what the fuck <laughs> but right hand advantage is very important in this game because it gives you complete troll all right so take some shots at me i'm gonna show you guys how to get around let's say you have somebody on cover and they're putting shots into you you're gonna try to put some uh, hard aims in there he's not trying super hard to kill me he's just trying to put shots on you he can you can either do it that route but you're not most likely you're not gonna catch him snoozing like that they're not gonna hard aim you that hard they're probably gonna throw some side shots in there so let's try it again so the best thing to do in a situation like this is i usually try to get a shot in try to put a shot in and you go wide hit the wall bounce and start putting shots in Always go wide or go inwards first. Like you want to put a shot in, go wide, take him back, and pull him out. Of course, it's not going to work every time, so we're going to try this one more time. He now knows what we're doing, so we need to find another way. We're going to put a shot into him and just push up. He's going to miss a shot. That's when we go wide. So situations like that is you just want to throw in different things. It's not always going to work, but knowing your placement of your shots and where you're going to be at is very important. And just knowing where your opponent might push to or have control of is even more important. All right, guys. So now I had right, or I had right hand advantage over there. So now we're gonna go ahead and give him right hand advantage and show you guys that even in a lefty situation, you have a better chance. So also, I do have high ground. So go ahead and try to shoot me, Jerry. I'm gonna put a shot in him. Now this is completely different situation. I have high ground, so I'm gonna put a shot in, try to push up, do my lefty thing, and I start sliding on the wall. Sometimes I do the slide. Now that's a little bit advanced, so you might just practice hitting the wall and hitting to your right. But the main thing of doing this, no matter what side you want, is you want to be able to pull the player out and go back. So basically, he's going to sit there, right? I'm going to pull him out like that. He's going to take a shot, and I got his body. And so basically, that pulls out his character. And when it pulls out his character, that's when you can get a shot in him and finish the down. All right, guys. So now you saw that I had right-hand advantage, and I was pushing him up going wide. So now we're going to flip the scenario and show you what to do when they end up going wide. So go ahead, Jerry. Try to kill me. I'm going to in a position where he's going to push me. I have right-hand advantage. I'm waiting for him to come. So he's going to go ahead. I'm, I'm shooting over the wall. As you can see right here, I'm getting a better placement with my shot so that he can't hit me when I'm shooting over the wall. Now, I'm not saying you should always camp, but it is very important to get a shot in and then put yourself out of cover. So go ahead and try that one more time. So I'm going to go ahead and completely guard myself from him being able to hit me, get some shots in, and then I'm going to switch it back and then push. And that's how you get the kill. Now, that's not always going to work, but chances are you're going to defeat your opponent more than often. All right, guys, now I want to show you guys how to take control of hot spots because you're not always going to have walls. You're not always going to be able to hard aim or find a way to get out the situation. That's where movement comes in, but this is a beginner's tutorial, so I don't want to stress on movement too much, guys. So now me and my buddy Jerry, we're both going to run towards Sniper now, and we're going to see who could take control. This is what you do in a spot like this. He is going to try to kill me. I'm going to go ahead and try to get a good angle on him. I'm going to try to push him out of the situation he's in, but you, as you guys can see, I used the wall right here. Got a shot on him, went to the wide like I told you earlier, so he had to push inwards. Since I put a shot on his left, since I put a shot here, it forced him to go to his left because he knew I was I was strong on my right hand side, so he had to go to his left. And by him going to his left allowed me to push up here and get the shot to get him down. So basically little things like that are going to change the game. Go to that side, Jerry. We're going to go ahead and do the same thing, but now I don't have the power of right hand advantage off the bat. Go. So now I'm going to push up, and we do have a situation. So now I see him again. I'm going to try to get a shot in. I'm going to push up this time and change it up. So now he's, he's, a little, he's a little tweaky. But as you can see, he missed a shot. That was a pretty retarded miss. But it allowed me to get up in his face enough to where I could headshot him. Now, like I said, guys, it's not every situation is not always going to work. But what makes a, a good player is the ability to adapt in the situation. To know that if you push left, he goes hard right. You need to be able to control your right and push in and have a better shot. You know, Angles are very important in getting them shots off before you finish them are also important all right guys so now i just want to stress how important it is to know where your enemy is going to be before he even knows it so me and jerry we're going to push up right now go ahead jerry and i'm going to show you guys how important it is to know your shots before your enemy does so i'm going to go ahead and try to get a shot into him he's putting some nice shots in i got the push up i put the shot it's going to force
force him either to get out of a position, but I knew that he was so weak he had to stay where he was. So usually if you put a shot left side, you got to understand they're going to force right side because you have power on left. If I put a shot on left side, Jerry, go to that thing real quick. No, no, come up right here. If, I, if I'm if i right here, peek out your left. If I'm right here and somebody, I put a shot on him and I start pushing up, he's instantly going to think to either put one shot in me or go to his other side depending on how strong he is. If he goes to the other side, go to the other side. I have two choices. I either could push this way and try to finish off my down like I did in the first one when I went wide, if you guys remember, or I can push up and hit with the back A. Now, it depends on what situation you're in that you're going to do. If you remember when I went wide to lure him outwards, he came towards me. When I went left to put a shot in, depending on how strong he wants to act, he'll either go to the right or put a shot in. But if you're quick enough to get them back A's in that I taught you guys, you'll have an easy outplay. Alright guys, so that's all about all for this video. I really just wanted to share with you guys general movement and Nash tutorial. This will not be uh, a part, a three-part series like I said in the beginning of the video. I decided this is actually going to be a multiple-part series. I'm just going to do this as much as possible. It will be um, gameplay with Zeus or something. Basically, I have so much more to offer from hotspots to placements and everything, but I want you guys to get the general idea of what I'm doing. Also guys, if you didn't know, the main thing why I'm doing that is because I'm a wall bouncer. If you don't know what wall bouncing is, this is it so it allows you to get out of situations with the nasher and just do things that you know normally players couldn't do so that's the main thing of a nasher tutorials to teach you that you can do shit like this and basically get away with it so if you guys want to see more videos like this more tactical videos i'm completely new to it i've never taught people before i've always been a pub stomper but i'm willing to teach you guys as long as you guys are willing to learn so just make sure to drop a thumbs up if you want more gameplay with zeus as well as let me know what you guys would like to learn about mainly and shout out to gsq doomblade with his moldy ass fucking forehead bitch <laughs> <laughs> Alright guys, before we end of the video, I want to show you guys my settings real quick because I know you guys spam the comments so much with my controlling settings. Any video that involves the Nasher or movement, so let's go ahead and show you. I'm at 30, 30, 29, 10, 0, 0. I do believe, in my opinion, these are the best settings for wall bouncing. I do switch this from 0 to 3 here and there, but everything else is completely default. Control stream, omnidirectional on, all that. But I just want to show you guys that to get it out the way so you guys don't have to ask in the comments. But the last thing I want to say is shout out to GSQ Ambitious, who is now GSQ Reactives, as well as GSQ Doomblade for helping me make this video. Without them, it wouldn't have came to you guys. I do want this to be a consistent series, so every like means the world to me, guys. Hopefully, I can do like five to ten of these in the future instead of a three-part, like I said. But much love, homies. Don't forget to drop a like for the Olympus fam, and let's get to 15K, baby.